I'm so glad I have a Bible. Huh. <laughs> you have to open your spirit tonight. You understand? There's some of you, you don't know why, why is everybody making noise? <laughs> Hallelujah. You may just be wondering, why is everybody making noise? Why the shouting? Well, you'd find out in a moment. Because you'd be shouting too. Amen. You know, when you respond like that to the word of God, your spirit opens. Some people don't know how to open their spirits to God. They just stay there stiff and quiet, trying to be serious. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that Philip the evangelist went to preach in Samaria. And that devils were cast out. And so many people were healed. Lots of lame people got up to walk. Then the Bible says, and there was great joy in the city. Great joy. Every time the Holy Ghost manifests himself, there's great joy. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. And when the devil wants to destroy a family, one of the things he does first is to destroy their joy. Everybody becomes sad and ugly, long-faced. They come from work looking like they've been beaten up. Even the children come from school looking sad. Everybody's sad. No joy in the home. So the devil can take over. But where there's joy, it's difficult for the devil to penetrate. Hallelujah. So are you ready tonight? <clears throat> now, you know I don't like speaking Hebrew and Greek. Because I haven't even mastered English yet. So, But sometimes it's important for us to clarify certain things because in the English language... Uh, it's just not rich enough to express some of those thoughts that the Holy Spirit wants to get across to us. And we've been looking at the Word of God, and I told you that there's something about the Word that we receive from God. Why is it that many Christians... do so many things that they believe they have learned to do or they confess the word of God and pray and pray and pray and it looks like God's not doing nothing. They try. Some wonder why is God delaying? I've got news for you. You have to understand this fact. Even though we say, oh, God's going to do something. God's going to perform a miracle for you. God's going to heal you. God's going to do this and that. The Spirit of God is here with us. God from heaven is really not doing anything now. Surprise? You want to know what God is doing? Can I tell you? According to the Bible, He's resting. <laughs> You didn't know that, but Papa God is resting. He's not supposed to be working. He doesn't do anything except by His Spirit. And His Spirit is not there in heaven with Him. His Spirit is here with us. So Papa God is not working. He's resting. You didn't know that. When He was done with His job... He sent Jesus. And Jesus came and worked. He said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. 
and the night came and he could not work when was that night when he said to those Jewish leaders and Roman soldiers this is your hour and the power of darkness and refused to perform a miracle to save himself that was the night he was betrayed and then after his resurrection the Holy Spirit of God came and took over and set it out the church for without the Holy Spirit there could have been no church Bible says for by one spirit we all baptized into one body so it's the Holy Spirit that baptizes people into the body of Christ without the Holy Ghost there is no church so when they ask you when did the church of Jesus Christ begin it began when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost there was no New Testament church until the Holy Spirit came first Corinthians 12 13 praise God hallelujah <clears throat> now the Holy Spirit is doing the work because Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father and you don't sit until your job is done so Jesus has done his part and he's not working now he is sitting the only times that he stands are those times that he stands up to applaud us <laughs> hallelujah you say how do you know well when you read in the book of Acts you remember Stephen when he was stoned to death as he was dying he said I see the son of man standing he was standing at the right hand of the father doing what ready to receive Stephen applauding him as his first martyr praise God thank you Lord Jesus hallelujah so Jesus is not doing anything father is not doing anything the Holy Spirit is the one that's working right now and he's working with the body of Christ he's working with the church and we are his body he needs us to work you get it but a lot of times we don't realize how much God needs us I love T.L. Osborne he said something very important he said God needs me as much as I need him how true did you know that he needs you as much as you need him the only reason God's working here by the Holy Ghost is because we are here you know we have been taught many times and through the years how insignificant we are how unimportant we are how the God's so big and we are so small and so insignificant just a speck in the dust and so God doesn't need us we don't count we don't mean nothing and so because of that we look at ourselves so small but you have to understand you have some value you have to understand that the Bible says we were bought with a price you don't buy nothing with a price you buy something with a price and if you want to know what your value is find out what was paid for you that will tell you your real value I'm valuable to God he paid dearly for me praise God <laughs> hallelujah Jesus had to die the Bible says you were not redeemed by ordinary materials like silver and gold and precious stones but with the blood divine blood of the precious Son of God Jesus Christ you were bought with a price you were bought with a price say that to someone close to you, you were bought with a price you have value hallelujah and so we are here as God's children not as beggars but as those to whom divine verities have been committed and it's up to us to find out what they are and begin to operate them through the power of the Spirit of God amen, amen. let's turn to the Bible now <clears throat> St. John's Gospel, let's see Jesus' principle. How, why he performed miracles 
How come he was so used of God? St. John's Gospel, chapter number 14. And we are reading from verse 10. <clears throat> Ready? From verse 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? <laughs> the Rhema. <laughs> oh, glory. You see, I, I, I'd like to point out to you, every time he uses the word Rhema or Logos, I want you to notice the difference. So you understand his expression and the power of the word. He says, Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? I am in the Father and the Father in me? He says, Do you believe that? The rhema that I speak unto you, <laughs> I speak not of myself. I do not speak it from myself. That's what Jesus is saying. He says, don't you believe that I mean the Father and the Father in me? The rhema that I speak to you doesn't come from me. Huh. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. I want you to notice this is so powerful. He says, don't you believe that the Father is in me? I am in the Father and the Father is in me. He says, don't you believe that? He says, the rhema, the words, the rhema that I speak to you doesn't come from me. That rhema comes from the Father. And then he says, and the Father that dwelleth in me. Well, it means to abide in such a way as to govern. It means that the Father controlled Jesus. It means that the Father settled in Jesus. It means to settle, to dwell. It's to settle, abide in such a way as to take charge. He is saying... That the father lived in him, the father dwelled in him, and the father took charge of him. The father governed him. This is the rhema that I speak to you. This personal word of the now. It's a word of power. It's the active word of God of power for the now. It says this word that I speak to you doesn't come from me. It comes from the father. Man, look at this. Very beautiful. He says, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. What is Jesus saying? He is connecting Rhema with the works. He's letting us know that through the Rhema that he speaks, Papa God performs miracles. He says, the Rhema that I speak unto you doesn't come from me. So the works that you see come from the Father. The Father does the works through the rhema that I speak. So rhema produces works. The works of God. Because rhema is God's word. So when we utter rhema, we are not speaking mere revelation. Do you understand? We are not speaking mere words that have been written down here. We are speaking God's eternal word. When we speak rhema, it is the Father that dwelleth in us that is actually speaking. Jesus said, when I speak rhema, it's not coming from me. It's coming from the Father that lives in me. So he does the works. So when rhema is released, works are performed. Can you say amen? So you see, you cannot separate rhema from the works of God. Rhema produces the works of God. Hallelujah. See, well, when you quote scriptures, by merely echoing those scriptures, works are not produced. That's the reason some people wonder why. 
They said, why is it? I've been quoting this thing. I've been repeating the scriptures. I've been confessing. Why is it not working? Yeah, because you're confessing all right. But you see, you are pulling out logos. You haven't received Rhema. You see, you have to receive Rhema. Rhema is spirit. Hallelujah. Remember in St. John's Gospel, chapter number 6, when we studied from the 63rd verse, Jesus said, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The spirit makes alive. The spirit produces results. He said the flesh profited nothing. He says there's no advantage to the flesh. Then he said, the rhema that I speak to you, the rhema that I speak to you, they are spirits and they are life. Hallelujah. The rhema that I speak to you, they are spirits and they are life. Now he tells us that that rhema doesn't come from himself. That rhema comes from God. And that rhema is connected to the works of God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So when you want to see miracles, you want to see the supernatural, you need rhema. The logos of God is living and active. We already studied that. Hebrews 4.12, quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. In other words, the logos of God can help you distinguish between the spirit and the flesh. So you need logos. You need the understanding of the whole body of truth. You have to study the word of God. When you study the word of God, you will understand what is the mind of God. But that doesn't give you rhema. You understand what is the mind of God? You know when it's your mind trying to guide you. You know when it's your own thoughts. You know when the flesh is trying to gain the mastery over you. You know when it's the spirit. He says dividing between what? The soul and the spirit. It separates the soul from the spirit. He says the logos of God. Is living and active, quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the hearts. And then tells us all things are naked to him, praise God. All things are unveiled to the word of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we need, we need to study the word. We need to understand the word. But that's not necessarily going to change your situation. It will help you grow. You'll be a better disciple. Jesus said, you shall know the truth. The truth shall make you free. But then he said, if you continue in my logos, you shall be my disciples indeed. See that? You continue in that revelation. The word that has been given to us. But Rhema is the personal word for you. And it is the word for the now, for your now situation. It is God speaking to you, not speaking to us, to you, you. That's why sometimes in a meeting we say, in the name of Jesus, rise up. One crippled man has heard it. He says, that man's talking to me. And he gets up. The other guy is waiting to know whether he means us. Somebody said in the meeting, he said, I heard my name. He said, the, the preacher called my name. I thought, I didn't call his name. He said, well, you called my name. And when you called my name, I got up. I said, dear Jesus, I didn't call his name. But you know what? Rhema was out there. <laughs> Hallelujah. He heard Rhema. He received it. In Port Harcourt, there's a lady who couldn't walk. Her friends and relatives brought her there. She was lying prostrate on the ground. And I began to talk about a woman on the ground. She said, when I heard it, I knew it was me. I knew it was me. 
Now you're talking about tens of thousands of people there. The whole stadium was packed out. Yet she said, I knew he was talking about me. And she got up, healed by the power of God. Hallelujah. What did she receive? She received Rhema. She got Rhema. There could have been lots of other people there that day, sick and in the same condition. But they didn't get Rhema. They were listening to the preaching. Somebody was listening for Rhema. Hallelujah. That's the way it is. When you get Rhema, Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every Rhema that comes from the mouth of God. You live by Rhema. You may read 10 chapters a day of the Bible. That's not Rhema. That's good logos. But you need a word. One word from God can change your life forever. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every rhema that comes from the mouth of God. You live by rhema. Hallelujah. And that's what you need. Sometimes you find a brother or sister in, in a problem, terrible predicament, and everybody has prayed for him or prayed for her. What that fellow needs is rhema. You need to hear from heaven. And thanks be unto God, we can all hear from heaven. The problem with a lot of Christians today is that they think somebody should hear for them. They're not ready to hear. But that's the reason that we're teaching the Word of God. He wants you to hear for you. You need it. And until you hear it, God can't do nothing for you. You need it. You need to hear from God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Is God talking to me? <laughs> oh. Who, 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 who? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, let's look at something here. Let's just read that portion again, and then uh, in chapter 14, verse 10, Believest thou not? <clears throat> that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily I, verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me the works that I do, shall he do also. You see that? And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Whatever you demand to be done in my name, he says, I'll cause it to happen. He's not saying, I'll give it to you. He says, I'll cause it to happen. I'll be back of it. I'll cause it to happen. He's not saying that you ask him. Look at it. In verse 13, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name. He didn't say you shall ask me. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name. He didn't say whatsoever you shall ask me in my name. There's a great difference. Now you remember he said whatever you ask the Father in my name. Now he says whatsoever you shall ask in my name. He didn't say whatsoever you shall ask me in my name. Because that won't work. You don't ask Jesus in Jesus' name. There's a lot of Christians who pray to Jesus in Jesus' name. That's spiritual foolishness. And they don't know why the prayers are not being answered. You don't pray to Jesus in Jesus' name. doesn't work. You ask the Father in Jesus' name. But this particular place is not even talking about prayer. He's talking about when you make a demand in the name of Jesus. When you command anything to take place in the name of Jesus. Jesus says, I'll cause it to happen. In other words, my power will be back of it. I'll ensure it works. See why we cannot fail? We can talk to situations in our lives to change in the name of Jesus. And he says, I'll cause it to happen. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. All right, now let's look at 
chapter 15, St. John's Gospel, St. John chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 7. Have you seen it? Chapter 15 is in John's Gospel. Verse 7. Jesus said, If ye abide in me, remember, he said, I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Praise God. Now he tells us to use the same principle. He tells us to use the same principle. He says, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, and that's that again is Rhema. My Rhema. Rhema. Abide in you. So here you see he's not talking about memorizing scripture. Now you have to memorize scripture. I love to memorize scriptures. But here he's not talking about memorizing scripture. He says if you abide in me and my Rhema abides in you. That means my personal word to you remains in you. You know what I told you. He abide in me, my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will. <laughs> and it shall be. Now, the, the Greek word here is ginomai. That means it will be <laughs> launched into history. You know, I, I love the Greek expression there. He says it will be produced. It will arrive on the stage. That's what the Greek says. He says, whatever, that thing that you ask for will show up on the stage. Now the first one that we started in the 14th chapter is talking about changing things. Making things happen from already existing material. But this time he uses the word ginomai, meaning that it will be produced from nothing. In other words, if it doesn't exist already, it will be made for you. Hallelujah. You can be the first to ever have it happen. <laughs> Glory to God. Woo! Glory. You can be the first. But the principle is, if you abide in me and my rhema abides in you, let rhema abide in you, and you shall ask what you will. If it doesn't exist, I'll produce it. Praise God. I'll make it happen. It will come up on stage. It will show up. It will come into history. Go read a God. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we say that uh, what God does for one, he'll do for everyone under the same circumstances. But this time he's telling you, even, even if he hasn't done it for anybody yet, <laughs> you can be the first one to get it. See, you can be number one. You can be number one. Moses was number one to split up waters. Tore up the Red Sea. Hallelujah. You can be number one. And he's ready for you to be number one. He says, let Rhema abide in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I love the Word of God. Can we take another step, Father? Hmm. I said, through Logos, the Word of God, your spirit is separated from the flesh. It helps you separate the spirit from the mind. As you study the scriptures, your spirit is sanctified. Jesus said, you are clean through the words that I have spoken unto you. It purifies your heart. And that's why it's so important that we study God's word. Make the word of God your friend. Amen. Study it and know it. It will change your heart, change your life, build you up. It says, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up. See, as you study, it will build you up. Amen.
will build you up. All right. I'd like you to turn to the book of Joshua. I told you today we're going to be looking at how do we receive Rhema. I need some Rhema. <laughs> how do I get it? How do I get it? I need Rhema now. How do I get it? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want some Rima tonight? <laughs> hmm. Are you in the book of Joshua? Now, just for the records, I'd like you to know that every one of us can actually receive Rima. And we can receive Rima anytime from God. Can you look at St. John's Gospel, um, chapter number 8, verse 47, where it did the other day? But I want us to just look at it one more time. <clears throat> Have you seen it? St. John's Gospel, chapter number 8. I am looking at verse number 47. He that is of God, and I, I explained to you the other day that of God here means he that originates from God. All right? So he says, he that is of God heareth God's rhema. If you are of God, you can hear God's rhema. And the word hear, hear, that we have here, hear it, means that you can catch it. Praise God. In other words, it's like God's rhema comes like signals. And you have the receptacle system in your spirit. And when God speaks rhema, you can catch it. You can catch the signal. That's what he's saying. He that is of God, he that originates from God, he that is born of God can catch God's rhema. You can receive the signals. Oh, 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 thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. See, we have to be taught how, 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 how. Remember in the Old Testament, the Bible tells us how that Samuel, as a young lad, had not known, had not known how to receive God's word, even though he was growing to be a prophet. He hadn't known how to receive the word. No wonder God called him three times and he didn't know God called him. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so, he that heareth, he, he that is of God heareth God's words. Then he said, Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. So those who are not of God cannot hear them. They can't receive rima. You see that? They wonder, how, how did you hear God? You said God talked to you. How did you hear God? Are you saying God, the Almighty God, talked to you? How dare you, they say. How could you say, Almighty oh, God, left all the wonders of heaven, the whole universe to talk to you, little rat? Well, they don't know that's not the way God sees it. And yet they believe Jesus died for them. Hallelujah. No, you are more than a speck in the dust. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He that is of God, heareth God's rhema. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. So if you're not of God, forget about hearing rhema. You're not going to get it. You have to start from where we get started. Be born again. But if you're a child of God, rhema belongs to you. So all you have to do is raise your antenna. Raise your spiritual antenna. Get a hold of Rhema. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. All right. The book of Joshua. Old Testament now. If you came to the church tonight with Gideon's Bible free not to be sold, <laughs> you will not find Joshua. 
So I said, well, that part of it is not in my Bible. No, it's not there because yours is not a Bible. <laughs> what you have is New Testament portion of the Bible. What you have is a part of the Bible. The Bible is from the Old Testament to the New. Genesis to Revelation. Are you ready? Something significant that I'd like us to look at. <laughs> hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't know why many Christians suffer for nothing. I'm telling you. Your suffering is unnecessary. I've said it many times. No Christian, no Christian needs to suffer. Suffer persecution. There ain't no problem with that. We can all suffer persecution. That's all right. That's for our spiritual promotion. It's good. Amen. But don't suffer with sickness. Don't suffer with disease. Don't suffer with poverty. You don't need to suffer. You don't need to. When you study this thing, you discover you have, I mean, you have it made. Everything has been put in the right place just for you. Everybody may not have 10 houses. You may not have 20 cars. You may not store up billions of dollars. But everyone can have more than enough. To be able to help someone else. To require no assistance. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Everyone. We'll get there in a moment. But let's look at this. Joshua chapter 1. Now, you know, Moses is dead. And uh, God's getting ready for Joshua to take over. And he's giving him his marching orders. Verse 8. You ready? <clears throat> he says, this, this book of the law shall not depart out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Oh, glory. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Hmm. Some of you keep quoting Time and Newsweek. You keep quoting all the funny newspapers they got here. But look at this. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But, but thou, my, 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 dear Lord Jesus, but thou, oh my, thou, Lako Sandra Liga, ba 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 ya. Whew. Trying to control myself so that I can finish this service. But thou shalt, ha 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 ha, oh glory. <laughs> hmm. This book of the law shall not depart hmm, shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success many years ago 1980 this came to me as Rima I'll never forget it I was sitting down there in that field with a chair there. Just looking to heaven. Talking to God. About life. About my future. About serving Him. 
And God spoke to me. And he spoke to me from here. It came to me as Rema. And I got a hold of it. For many years I told people that was my best portion of the Bible. Why? Because it came to my spirit from God. He was talking to me. And I got a hold of it. I'll tell you about getting a hold of scripture today. Relax. Now. There's something I want to show you here. He says, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate. Meditate. Now, there's an interesting Hebrew word that's used here. And when it says meditate, we have only known, a lot of us have only known a little part of the meaning of that word. When it says meditate, it means to ruminate. It means to, to mutter. It means to speak of it under your voice. You say it again and again. Say it again and again. But that's about how far a lot of us know about it. But the same word is translated for us in the book of Isaiah. And shows us something more about this kind of meditation. That God was talking to Joshua about. You sure you still have some strength to shout? <laughs> oh my. I want to show you because, see, <clears throat> see, you're going to find out shouting is of the Holy Ghost. Just get ready now. You remember what he said to them? He said the seventh time. He said, shout! And the words will come down. Hallelujah! Praise God! Oh God! Hallelujah! Praise God! Praise the Lord! He says, but thou shalt meditate therein, day and night. He said, meditate. You know what he's saying? Have you ever seen those guys, I believe you must have seen them, at the wailing wall of Jerusalem? You've seen them go to those walls? You've seen those Jews? They stand there by the wall just doing like this. You know what they're doing? They're meditating. That's what they're doing. They're talking, they're, they're muttering. The talking, the talking scriptures. That's what they're doing. See, you want you want to be a Christian, cool and calm. Is that right? You haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> you haven't seen anything yet. See, when you begin to behave like the Bible says, some folks will think you're nuts. I mean, you just, you, you just sit down and you go. Just, just you. Only you, just talking. And, and God says, we must do it. He says, you want to see prosperity? You want to see success? He says, you've got to do it. You're going to talk the word. You're going to talk it. Why does he say talk it? Because he knows that as you, as you meditate on his words, Rhema, Rhema will come to you. Go word of God. Hallelujah. He knows that as you meditate, it will get into your spirit and become personal. And that's Rhema. You just keep saying it. You keep saying it. You keep saying it. You keep saying it. I, 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 you say it again. My God. My, 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 my God. My, my, my God. Shah. Hey. Shah. Hey. Shah. Supply. Go, oh, 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 oh. Every 
everything, you know, everything may look, everything may look dark around you. And the devil will keep telling you, you are going to be poor. He'll keep telling you, you are not going to have anything. But you see, just a moment, even though you already know, Philippians 4, 19, you already know. You've been coordinates. You've written it down. And you, you, you are there saying, my God shall supply all my needs. The devil says, oh, come on, stop talking. And, and you know, you, you just keep saying it. At a certain point, brother. At a certain point. Your spirit reaches out and gets a hold of the signal. It's mine. I know my God shall supply all oh, my need. I cannot be poor. I cannot be poor. I will never be broke in my life. My God. Oh, glory to God. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From that moment, from that moment, it has become personal to you. Personal to you. It's yours. That scripture is alive in you. You know it. It's alive in you. You may not be able to touch any money at the moment, but you just know there is a knowing inside. The moment you get that knowing, the moment you get that knowing on the inside, you remember what Jesus said, if my rhema remains in you, if it remains in you, hallelujah, if it abides. See that? That's the way it produces results. You take a hold of it. This is mine. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's move on. Huh. Now he says to meditate. Tell somebody, meditate. meditate. Say it again, meditate. meditate. All right. Now let me show you what that word means apart from when we talk under our voice. It says to imagine. <laughs> the same Hebrew word says imagine. But thou shalt imagine. So when you meditate, he says what? Imagine. That means visualize it. In other words, when you, when you begin thinking God's word, you think God's word in pictures. You see the Word of God producing results. You see the Word of God working for you now. He says, but thou shalt imagine. Imagine. You imagine God's words. Imagine means to create an image. Hallelujah. I'll never be broke in my life. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, there's more. There's more. There's something else that he tells us about that word, meditate. Meditate. When he says, thou shalt meditate. I told you one already. Apart from the fact that he says for us to mutter, speak, say it, under your voice. He says, imagine. Now the next one, which is powerful. I'll pick it up for you from the book of Isaiah, chapter 31. Just turn there quickly. Isaiah chapter number 31. Are you there? <clears throat> You'd like this. From verse 4. <clears throat> 
For thus hath the Lord spoken unto me. Like as the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey. Now, the word translated in the Old Testament, meditate, is Hagar. Hagar means to meditate. It means to muse over. It means to ruminate. It means to imagine. And then, so beautifully put here for us, he translates the word Hagar, meditate, to roaring. In other words, when the Word of God comes to you and you get a hold of it, are you hearing this? He says, you begin to roar God's words. You roar God's word like a young lion roaring on his prey. Now let me show you the result of it. Let me show you the result of it. When you meditate, he says, that means you roar God's word. Thou shalt roar God's word. Thou shalt roar God's word. Roar like a lion. In other words, there is another step. Apart from you talking like this and praying like this, nobody's hearing you. That hour comes when you are shouting, 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 shouting. All things work together for good to them that love God. And you know, when that happens, the anointing comes on you. The anointing comes on you. At that moment, the whole world becomes small. Look at it here. Let me read it to you. Verse 4. For those hath the Lord spoken unto me, like as the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey, when a multitude of shepherds is called forth against him. Listen. Huh? He says a multitude of shepherds. Called against the young lion when he has found his prey. Listen. He will not be afraid of their voice. Listen. He says, when that young lion begins to roar on his prey, even though a multitude of shepherds who is supposed to protect that prey, is called forth against him. As long as his eyes are on that prey, he will not be afraid of their voice. Did you hear that? In other words, when you get a hold of God's word, and that thing that you've been looking for, when Rhema delivers it to you, it doesn't matter who the adversaries are, they can't take it from you, brother. They can't take it from you. When you have Rhema, and you begin to roar Rhema, roar Rhema, roar Rhema, roar Rhema, you have laid possession, go away to God. Oh boy, you need Rhema to take a hold of your job. You need Rhema to take a hold of your business. You need Rhema to take a hold of your finances. You need Rhema to take a hold of your family. Are you hearing me tonight? Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter who's trying to take it from you. If you have Rhema on the inside, you begin to roar it out. Roar it out. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. They say you got cancer. Uh -uh. If you get rhema, I shall live and not die. I shall live and not die. Hallelujah. He says there are not enough of them to take it from you. You get that rhema. The doctor says, well, you got two months to leave. What you need is rhema. When you get that rhema, you begin to speak it out. I shall live and not die. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ha <laughs> ha, glory to God. Amen. Amen. Sit down, there's more. There's more. <laughs> yeah, glory. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 